Every industrial process on Earth relies on an instrumentation engineer and technician to keep things on track. In all process industries, including water treatment plants, quantities such as temperature, pressure, level, and flow need to be measured and controlled. Control and measurement are done by various means, including electronic, pneumatic, and hydraulic equipment and computers. The instrumentation engineers and technicians installs, maintains, tests, and calibrates the equipment used to control and measure. In this video, we will cover a range of interview questions and their answers from basic to advanced level for water treatment plants, instrument engineers, and technicians. Instrument engineers and technicians. Interview questions and answers. Question 1. What is an electronic circuit? An electronic circuit is a closed loop of components that allows the flow of electric current to perform a specific function. Question 2. What is a resistor? A resistor is a passive electronic component that limits the flow of current in a circuit. Question 3. Describe the function of a capacitor. A capacitor stores and releases electrical energy and is often used to filter signals and stabilize voltages. Question 4. What is a diode and its purpose? A diode allows current to flow in one direction and blocks it in the opposite direction, used for rectification and signal demodulation. Question 5. What is an operational amplifier, OP amp? An OP amp is a high gain differential amplifier used for amplifying signals, performing mathematical operations, and more. Question 6. Explain PWM, pulse width modulation. PWM is a technique that controls the average power delivered to a load by varying the width of pulses in a square wave signal. Question 7. What is a microcontroller? A microcontroller is a compact integrated circuit that contains a processor, memory, and input-output peripherals for controlling digital systems. Question 8. Explain the purpose of a PLC in a water treatment system. A PLC in a water treatment system controls and automates various processes such as pumping, mixing, and chemical dosing based on predefined logic. Question 9. How do you program a PLC for a specific water treatment process? Programming involves using ladder logic or other programming languages to create sequences that manage pumps, valves, and sensors to achieve the desired treatment process. Question 10. What is the significance of PLC communication protocols in a water treatment plant? Communication protocols allow PLCs to exchange data with other devices, like HMIs, human-machine interfaces, enabling real-time monitoring and control. Question 11. How does a pressure transmitter work and where is it typically used in water treatment? A pressure transmitter converts pressure into an electrical signal. It's used to monitor pressures in pipelines, tanks, and filters within the water treatment process. Question 12. Describe the steps to calibrate a pressure transmitter. Calibrating involves applying known pressures and adjusting the transmitter's output to match the expected values. Question 13. What is the purpose of a level transmitter in water treatment systems? A level transmitter measures the liquid level in tanks and basins, providing data for control and monitoring purposes. Question 14. How can you troubleshoot an inaccurate level reading from a level transmitter? Troubleshooting involves checking for sensor damage, ensuring proper installation, and calibrating the transmitter if necessary. Question 15. Explain how a flow transmitter operates and its role in water treatment. A flow transmitter measures the rate of liquid passing through a pipe, helping to control flow rates and monitor the efficiency of processes. Question 16. What factors might affect the accuracy of a flow transmitter's readings? Factors include pipe diameter, viscosity of the fluid, and proper positioning of the transmitter. Question 17. Can you name a few essential hand tools used by instrument technicians in water treatment? Essential hand tools include multimeters, screwdrivers, pliers, wire strippers, and calibration tools. Question 18. Explain the purpose of a multimeter in the instrumentation field. A multimeter measures voltage, current, and resistance in electrical circuits, aiding in troubleshooting and maintenance. Question 19. How do you use a loop calibrator and why is it important? 
A loop calibrator generates and measures current loops, ensuring accurate readings from instruments and helping to calibrate devices. Question 20. What is the function of a signal generator in water treatment instrumentation? A signal generator produces electronic signals used to test and calibrate instruments, simulating various conditions for accuracy testing. Question 21. Describe the process of calibrating a flow meter using equipment like a deadweight tester. Calibrating involves applying known weights to the deadweight tester to generate specific pressures, validating the flow meter's accuracy. Question 22. How can a handheld communicator assist in maintaining water treatment instruments? A handheld communicator connects to instruments, allowing technicians to access data, diagnose issues, and adjust settings remotely. Question 23. Discuss the role of a pressure gauge tester in ensuring accurate pressure readings. A pressure gauge tester verifies the accuracy of pressure gauges, ensuring they display correct values in different pressure ranges. Question 24. Explain the purpose of a SCADA system in a water treatment plant. A SCADA system monitors and controls various processes within the plant, allowing operators to visualize data, receive alarms, and make informed decisions. Question 25. How does a SCADA system communicate with remote devices and instruments? SCADA systems use communication protocols like Modbus, OPC, or DNP3 to exchange data with PLC's sensors and other devices. Question 26. Describe the concept of remote telemetry units, RTUs, in SCADA systems. RTUs collect data from remote field devices and sensors, transmitting the information to the central SCADA system for monitoring and control. Question 27. What is the role of HMI, Human Machine Interface, software in SCADA systems? HMI software provides a graphical interface that allows operators to interact with the SCADA system, view data trends, and issue commands. Question 28. Define open-loop and closed-loop control systems. An open-loop control system operates without feedback, while a closed-loop feedback control system adjusts its output based on measured results. Question 29. How does proportional integral derivative, PID, control contribute to maintaining process parameters? PID control uses proportional, integral, and derivative terms to adjust control outputs and maintain desired process parameters. Question 30. What is the purpose of a control loop in a water treatment process? A control loop regulates a specific process parameter, such as temperature or pressure, by continuously comparing the desired set point with the actual value. Question 31. How do SCADA systems and control systems interact to optimize water treatment processes? SCADA systems provide real-time data and trends to operators, while control systems adjust actuators and devices to maintain optimal conditions. Question 32. Discuss the benefits of using SCADA systems for remote monitoring and control of water treatment facilities. SCADA systems enable remote monitoring, reducing the need for on-site presence, increasing response time, and improving operational efficiency.